Our first case study involves a company we got involved with at a conference a few years ago. The CIO met us, took us to dinner, and told us his story. In short, he'd been pulled out of retirement to work for a CEO that had taken over a company recently. It's about a $70 million healthcare company, and he was aware of a lot of problems. He had problems with database performance, server uptime, data sprawl, overworked staff, and he told us that he needed a couple of months to get his act together before he could bring us in, but that he knew that he needed our services. As circumstances happened, he wasn't able to wait two months because about a week later, he had a system crash and his people couldn't bring it back up. We got involved, brought the system back up, and at that time identified the things that we needed to do in order to stabilize the environment. Once the environment was stabilized, he said, you're right, we need to talk now. We really can't wait because we need this environment managed correctly. His problem was data governance. He had a number of people who knew some of the things about some of the systems. He didn't have anybody who knew everything about all the systems. And we had a situation where not only were the systems down, but the customers were calling and complaining. If your customers are calling and complaining, this escalates the risk you have of losing your customers and not being able to be perceived as the problem solver, but instead as part of the problem. Restated, proper data governance procedures are going to improve your uptime, improve your customer retention, and hence improve your profitability. What caused this problem? The first issue was territoriality. Territoriality means that the DBAs did not want to talk to anybody about what they had. Nobody knew where the backups resided. Nobody knew any passwords. When a DBA was going on vacation, that DBA did not leave anybody with the internal knowledge of what was going on. No runbook. One of the things that your people need to do is document everything that's going on in the system. In the olden days, and I'm old, I used to say, what happens if somebody gets hit by a bus? And I said that at a shop and a week later, somebody got T-boned on his motorcycle. So now I ask the question, what happens when somebody wins the lottery, buys an island and throws their cell phones into the water? You need to know that whether somebody is gone or unavailable, there is a run book available and the ability to recover from disaster on the fly immediately with whichever DBAs happen to be left. How did we solve this problem? First, we need to understand the environment. Once we understand the environment, we're going to document the environment. We're going to control and document the servers. By control, we don't mean that we are going to keep people out of them, except for the people who should be kept out of them. Because one of the things that we identify almost every place we walk into is that permissions and security is way too broad. Next, we tune everything. How can we properly right size an environment if the CPUs are running at 90%, then they should be running at 20%. Next, we have to work with the business analysts, that is the employees of the target company, to understand what their needs are and talk to them about the capabilities of reporting and the capabilities of warehousing so that we can set reasonable expectations, get a reasonable set of specs, and build what they actually need. Once we have performed this, we can start peeling the onion, get down to brass tacks, and in a stable, documented, tuned environment, be able to start writing those enterprise reports, building the applets, building out the data warehouses. Note that the gains are gonna be minimal until you have each of the pieces working smoothly, but you can tune these environments in the order of the priority based on business requirements. Once again, this is a business decision more than a technical decision. So what are the proper procedures for data governance? Once the environments are stabilized, we're going to begin tuning. We're going to point a tool at the environment. The purpose of the tool is to give us a baseline of what's going on so that we don't have simply anecdotal things run slow on Monday mornings. This is not something you can tune based upon. Real data, that is data gathered by a tool, is something that we can start tuning based upon. While this data is being gathered, we're going to implement data governance standards and start setting access, changes, QA, security, and we're going to implement this across all the environments. Critical, we want consistency across the environments. We're going to enforce new business rules. What are these new business rules? Well, these are not things we're setting up arbitrarily. These are things that we're setting up in conjunction with the data analysts. Once we have these new business rules applied, we're going to update, revise if necessary, 
and stand up these new rules based on the needs of the environment. Next, we're going to create processes and note we're creating processes. We're not doing any of this dynamically. We're building the processes so that we can clean the unstructured data, build the warehouses, build the databases, and keep them up and running smoothly. Next, we identify unused and lightly used systems. It is not unusual to walk into an environment with over 100 servers and identify that they should be really running about 30 servers. That saves millions, literally millions in licensing costs over the course of a year. And that's the same every single year. Finally, understand that this is not a one-time job. This is a process, this is a cycle. We go back to the beginning, tune, review, monitor, implement changes, look at the business rules, etc.